in my school about last year, I think, I don't think it's on anymore, there used to be an LGBT club. <clears throat> People would go up at lunch and they must just talk about how gay they are. I, I don't know what they would talk about. Me and my friend were once going to try and hijack it. I was going to pretend that I was questioning my gender. And I was going to then trick them and start debating them about transit, the, the whole trans issue. But yeah, what, what, do you, what do you think they talk about there? <laughs> hey, my name is, my name's Ben. I'm, I'm 12 years old and, you know, butt stuff. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. And there was a teacher moderating it. I have no idea what they spoke about. But it's pretty weird. I don't think sexual your sexual attraction towards other genders really matter in school, especially making a club about it. So yeah, this video is to all parents who have kids or want to have children in the future, and you know, just to pr just to show you the extent of propaganda. I'm 15 years old from Scotland, and I would say I live in a fairly moderate school. Like there's there's ones that brainwash kids more you could say uh but they still kind of go into it a little bit so i just want to show you the crazy extent to what goes on what we're told so i want to say one the first thing that goes on since i was like eight years old is the whole climate change i was made to believe at like age eight that the climate was going to keep changing keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter and that i i thought I wouldn't make it to like 40, I thought the planet was going to die by 2040, that there was no point living, you know, I, I started to like Greta Thunberg, <laughs> so, you know, they made us believe this, back then, I'd, you know, about the ozone layer, and it makes it hotter, all, all that crazy stuff, really, and what they do now is much less direct, but I'd almost say it's worse, because it's more subliminal, so what they'll say, they'll just slip, they'll just stick climate change into something. You'll be, you'll be talking about pollution and they'll randomly stick like, ooh, air pollution causes climate change. And then, you know, in a class one, she'll sometimes see like climate action. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, do we just have to restrict ourselves? Like, get just, the, the climate change thing is pushed really heavily. Well, not really heavily. It's probably less than our stuff. Oh, of course you have the simple stuff like, it's okay to be gay. It's like... Who cares? Honestly, who cares at all? Uh, another thing about climate change, by the way, in English, my English class, if we have to read like a, a passage on something and then we have to analyse it or we have to use it as an example, whatever, they, it, it would always be a passage from The Guardian and it would half the time be about climate change. So, yeah, that's another thing. Again, just subliminal. They're not directly telling us climate change, climate change, climate change. They're just making us read a passage about climate change and emissions and all this BS. You know, it's, it's crazy. Now, there's also a lot of racism, and I'm not talking about normal, standard racism, white on black, I'm talking about the opposite way. I saw on a little notice board thing, I think it was, just, I, I, I need to actually go and check it out, you know, because I, I didn't get close, but I saw it, and it says hashtag BLM, and that's like, okay, and I thought it was a bit weird, I was like, tell my friend, like, what says, why does it say BLM over there? And then I, I looked down a bit, and then it says, what is privilege? So I might, I might go and read that next time I'm there. I might take a photo to put in this video and I'll, and I'll show you whatever it says, I'm not sure. But that's pretty messed up. I had a teacher who was talking about white privilege once. I can't remember the exact speech, but he was just the, a white teacher coming in to tell us how much white people suck. Another teacher that works in like the same department, they kind of talk politics, history. And she was trying to explain to us how you can't be racist to white people. I she was ignoring me actually i was trying to say define racism because if if racism is prejudice against race and you you in fact can be racist to white people because that's what racism is discriminating or having feelings of prejudice towards someone based off the race so it wouldn't make sense how you if that's the definition because what's her definition if you can't be racist to white people then what's her definition of racism criticizing historically oppressed races but that's not even it's just not the definition objectively so i don't know what they're talking about there's all this anti-white racism. Like, they'll make you celebrate Black Lives Matter. I mean, no, they'll make you celebrate Black History Month in my French class. And then we're like, we're going to learn about famous Black French people. <laughs> I'm like, cool, whatever. But it's just annoying, you know? There's, there's no place for it in schools. Who cares? You know, they're always talking about diversity. you got, like, literal diversity ambassador, whatever. They, they don't even do anything. they just got a cool title and they get a couple of awards for being so 
liberal. Uh, I don't know. You know, we've had assemblies for boys only talking about toxic masculinity and how mask. And it was very coercive, actually. I, I felt it was very, very coercive. They were talking, they used the most, like, masculine acting slash looking teachers to basically go and inform us about our toxic masculinity, our male privilege, and all this stuff. And at the same time going on, they had a girls only assembly where they were just talking about sexual assault and how men are evil and they're always looking at you and your victims and supposedly girls don't feel safe in the school but like i'll be honest nothing's happened okay sure rare scenario not that i've heard of though you know these aren't common issues yet they all feel scared it's nothing that we've done it's just the fact that they've been told they're a threat they're dangerous they're dangerous they're all toxically masculine they've just been repeated this line that they're basically feared into nothing just like the climate change people they're, they're scared of something that doesn't even exist or that exists but isn't a threat when Andrew Tate was the whole hype you know two summers ago it, fine think about them what you will but they made sure to do at least one I think it was two assemblies to all the boys trying to tell us why he sucks and it wasn't just the fact that they said this is bad or whatever they obviously s snuck things like toxic masculinity into it again and they also just lied about him I felt it was, I mean, it's not the biggest deal if they're going to lie about him. They, you know, putting words in his mouth that he didn't say, it's fine. I, I sh I'm sure he doesn't care. It's not, it's not a big issue for him. But it's just a fact, why, like, why would you lie about that? Because if someone, you can argue what his influence is, you, but you can't really say that he only had a negative impact. He, he clearly had a somewhat positive impact on some, some boys. So to sit there and say he's evil because he said X thing that he didn't even say, it's just a bit ridiculous, you know? They've also, of course, gone about feminism. It's quite funny. I had a class last year, and it was kind of like politics and sociology mixed together. And there'd be, like, this stuff about feminism and other feminist topics. And, you know, of course, you you, you squeeze in a couple of random button, like, I'll button something. <laughs> you get a bit of a negative reaction in the class, but it's funny. But yeah, they, they're always talking about feminism and this stuff. They also still talk, they, they lie to us about health and diet. They'll tell us that fat and salt's bad, restrict red meat to once a week. Because of course the, the goal of the elite is to try and ban these things and seize the farmland. And it's much easier to do that if you tell them that not only is meat bad for the planet, but it's bad for you, it's bad for you and the planet. They're attacking it from all angles and it's, that's clearly the goal. And I don't know why they're trying to tell us fat and salt's bad. Like, they're, they're still going from the evidence and research done from like 50 years ago, the sugar industry paid for. And even though all the new research proves otherwise, they're still going by this old food pyramid, eat your 11 servings of bread and pasta. Per 11? How 11 servings of bread and pasta? Like, what? And it's just a total. They're basically promoting peasant food because they're them, we're us. They're them, the elite. We're us, the peasants. They want us to eat the peasant food. Because that's what they would do back then. They'd give all the peasants the grains and everything. They'd go eat their meat and cheese and be nice and fat. <laughs> you know, not because they're eating unhealthy, but just because they're eating so much. But, you know, they're probably drinking too much as well. But yeah, they would give us the, the beans and the legumes and all this stuff. Now that's what they're promoting to us. Not only is you're poor, so you eat this. They're just promoting it as in, like, this is really good for you. It's obviously not. So yeah, if you have kids in school or you you want to have kids i i genuinely hope you're a bit scared because they will be probably brainwashed you know oh sorry i can add to the list i need to add to the list this one's much worse uh, but the vaccines they in the same class of the one that talked about feminism all this stuff they made us watch a documentary once about the dangers of vaccine misinformation in social media and I mean, that's what it was. They were basically talking about how the COVID vaccine had negative information spread online and how that was dangerous and it should be banned. And it was probably some sort of BBC documentary. That's pretty crazy if you ask me. But yeah, if you have kids in school and or you're going to have kids in school, I hope you're scared. Because again, I, I say this a lot. Fear promotes and motivates action. So maybe you'll do something about it. If you want your kids to turn into Greta Thunberg, f climate communists, activists, fine. If you want them to be feminists, fine. If you want them to have no children because they think kids are bad for the planet, fine. If you want them to become vegan and mal malnourished, fine. But if you want them to be scared of their white privilege and think that 
or your sons to think they cannot be a man because that's toxic and bad, then fine. But I recommend homeschooling. Some people say, no, I can't do it for X, Y, and Z. I just think these are limiting beliefs. I mean, if, if the consequences are this bad, right? And now we see in primary schools they're teaching weird sexual stuff they shouldn't be teaching. I was lucky to have avoided that because now I'm a bit older, but the primary schools now probably promote this stuff. So you should probably take your kids up to schools, honestly. You might think it's difficult, I have to do this, I have to find money this way, you have to cut this and that. But you honestly should. If you want your kids to be not brainwashed, if you want to have a brighter future for you and your kids and the future generations so we can have a free and functioning and critically thinking society, then you should take your kids up to school. That's my honest opinion. Because most kids my age are smoking, vaping and drinking. This isn't like a 20%, this is like an 80%. This is a common thing. And, and I'm saying this because of like influence at school. People just get sucked in. And you know you, you can't really tell them your opinion because they'll just be informed by this group think and all the friends. Say, that's, that's the whole side point of like friends are just awful sometimes. And yeah, so like I don't really care about missing out on these things so I don't if I don't get involved in anything but you know most kids will most kids will be and most kids are so yeah you know I just want to add one final thing they also put the UN's sustainable goals or in other words sustainable development goals or in other words agenda 2030 goals in the classroom you know the ones that require digital ID and CBDCs to and carbon trackers to do in one of the classrooms they have that going around sure we also have the modern you know with the trans triangle uh pride flag in a couple classrooms all these small things but it's, it's just such awfulness honestly like because these aren't just people my age these are like 11 12 year olds in these schools if you're, if you're english actually you go to secondary a year earlier so like 10 year olds <laughs> so if you don't think they'll be brainwashed or misled an alternative to the un's agenda 2030 yeah, i have my agenda 2035 which says that most people have switched to homeschooling and most schools have shut down. Not because of tax money, but just because people aren't going to people aren't using the schools anymore. So that's part of my goal. So if you want to be part of this agenda twenty thirty five, no don't give me money. But you know, try homeschool your kids and all live freedom.